What is going on guys and welcome back to another cartoon conspiracy theory with your host as always came back time and today we're taking a very cool look back at Scooby-Doo now I've already done Scooby-Doo theories and I'll leave links to the previous Scooby-Doo theories in the description You guys can check those videos out as well if you've missed them But this one comes from me from a reddit user by the name of mighty heptagon And it's really cool because it ties together the real world and the Scooby-Doo universe the cartoon universe in the real world because it's I don't know just kind of really cool I thought it's kind of short uh, so bear with me. It's, it's not like this is fact. There's no, there's no like, evidence. This is just purely a fan theory. But it's cool enough that I thought I would share with you guys. So first off, a little bit of backstory on both the real world and Scooby-Doo world. Um, the facts are that uh, Scooby-Doo debuted in the United States in 1969. And the, the whole show, its premise seems fairly innocent. But when you take into account what was going on in the real world in America, in 1969, which I'm of course talking about the Vietnam uh, debacle was going on at this time, um, there was becoming a huge, huge grind or a grift between the public and you know the government at that time due to due to Vietnam. There was huge protests, there was riots, um, you know, there was all kinds of crazy stuff happening in the United States. And on top of that, you had so many people actually in Vietnam. I think it was like 400 and something thousand people, soldiers in Vietnam at the time. Could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it was an insane time. And there's a lot of people that think, or this theory claims, that the reason that the mystery machine or the, the crew, those four people in Scooby are taking this seemingly endless road trip to nowhere because they never really say where their destination is. They're always just in this van and they don't really know why or where they're going. They never say, oh, we're going here to do this. But they just seem to be on the road um, without a destination. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. But that's one of the main things that the theory is based around. But the theory is that they are defecting to Canada uh, basically to dodge the draft. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what the draft is, because this uh, has not been instated in so long, uh, back in the that day, back in the day uh, during the Vietnam War, and still to this day, you have to have a draft card or a draft thing, even though it's not technically in place. The, the government technically could reinstate the draft, but you know that would take World War III to happen, God forbid. But back then, they would pull random date uh, dates, uh, and if you got your name called well, by the draft, Bingo, you have no choice. You're automatically in the army. You're going to Vietnam, and there's just nothing you can do about it. Uh, so that around this time, there was lots of people that were burning their draft cards in protest. They were either they were dodging the draft by either you know uh, going or hiding or defecting to Canada. And that's what the theory says here. The theory says that all four of them are defecting to Canada to avoid the draft. Now this is going to explain it by character by character. And uh, just goes breaks down a little bit more, so you get a little more in depth about why each character is doing this. So Shaggy, it says here, is the is obviously the classic hippie stoner jive talker, and he just doesn't want to join the army. He's he's totally against it. He's he's got this this thing in his head where you know he's all you know, he's got the you know the peace, you know make love not war kind of thing. He's the hippie stoner, typical it's like 1960s, late 60s, 70s stoner um, person, and he's just so he's anti-war. He's anti-war, and he refuses to acknowledge his draft. So he's he's gotten in this van, he's taking his dog, and he's moving to Canada. And along the way, he comes across some friends. Um, obviously, Fred is the clean the the clean cut suburban kid um, who, who he really has no reason why he'd be on this road trip. I mean, yes, Shaggy could be on a road trip like this in a, in a van in the 60s, just smoking pot, being a, a doper, but Fred's too clean cut for that. So it makes perfect sense why he is, why we wouldn't be there, but he's there because he's defecting with Shaggy to go to Canada because he's dodging the draft because he also does not agree with the war. And of course, he's bringing his fiance Daphne, and that's why she's there. Uh, they were engaged, and that's why they're all that stuff always happens with them. You know, every time they get a mystery, it's you know we'll take upstairs. Me and Daphne will take upstairs in the bedroom. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, but that, that's why she's there. And uh, explaining the last character here, Velma, who was an, a very rebellious anti-war activist in at, in college. That's why she's the smart one. She was in college and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but she looks exactly like a, the, what like a character of almost pretty much of a Vietnam protester protester from 1969. Um, and that's exactly what she is. She's a she's an anti-war protester, and she joining this group to try and spread her message because they're traveling all over the country. They're traveling up north. 
and she's trying to, because they weren't drafting women back then, so she wasn't dodging the draft, but she joined the crew in the van so she could spread her message about anti-war and spread her peace message of peace to more people and try and get along with this as they make their way up to Canada. Um, so basically, that's all there was to the theory. So in a nutshell, uh, the show takes place in 1969, and that's the year that first came out. Uh, Fred and and Shaggy are dr- dodging the draft. Daphne is his fiance, and Shaggy and Velma are also uh, anti-war activists on top of that. And that's basically just a fan theory. Like I said, there wasn't too terribly much to it, and it's not like fact-based. There's no like you know clear-cut evidence. This is just a, a fan theory, fan fiction that was drummed up, and it makes kind of sense when it lines up with the timelines. And it's just a kind of a cool way to think about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I, I, I probably did a, a terrible job butchering this. Um, so if you guys want to go read the actual article, I will leave a link to it in the description. You can check it out on Reddit. Uh, but thank you guys so much for taking the time out of the day to watch this video. I also, also want to thank you guys for making me uh, able to get 100,000 subscribers. I just hit 100,000, and I want to thank you guys for that. We are doing a giant live stream event tomorrow, Friday, if you're watching this on Thursday, April 10th. We'll be doing it April 10th, but it's a Friday tomorrow. Uh, pretty much all day. So if you guys want to come check that out, I'll make a video about that later tomorrow with more details. But uh, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe if you are new around here. As always, guys, have a great day. Remember, this came back time somewhere, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, take it easy, and peace out.